The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Thought-provoking. Informative. Engaging. Are you ready to be inspired and equipped? And now, The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Welcome to The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort, where randomness is the only predictable thing. Boy. Now, you would think with that kind of tagline that there'd be something random about our faces. I'm speaking about facial hair, but there's some uniformity going on here today. Look at Ray's nice shaggy beard. Look at mine coming in, but now look at Eduardo Romano and see what's happened. Ooh, Ooh. over there. Boy, looks I gotta so give some applause for that. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Man, I'm all, I'm all it grows on you, doesn't it? Yeah, there, there is a resurgence of beards going on all across From the country, the right? Yeah, I'm telling you. I like it. it covers yeah. a multitude What do your beards do? Cover a multitude of chins. Cover a multitude yeah, of chins. Yeah, uh, stop That's the old right. turkey. That's right. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> well, friends, it is good to have you back. <laughs> Can we edit that out, Alan? <laughs> no, yes. It's the highlight of the program. It is good to have you back with us. And as a reminder, please remember to connect with us on Facebook. Check us out there. I've been having people connect with me, and it's been a blessing. They've been asking to questions. Them? and <laughs> I don't know about them, but it's been blessing me. That's good. But connect with us. Ray's got almost... Some crazy 400,000, almost whatever. Still so Mine is it. insignificant, but I love to connect. Uh, Eddie doesn't know what Facebook is yet, <laughs> but maybe one day he'll learn. Uh, and remember to check us out on uh, tczlive.com. You can watch us live if that's something that you haven't been doing or just catching these on YouTube. But also, if you do watch live, you can check us out on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash the way of the master. And of course, check us out on Twitter. Just say slash. It's a well, horrible word. <laughs> it's a horrible word. Be nice, right? Yeah. All right, friends. Well, today we have a very important program, and we're glad you are with us. And we're going to be covering a number of things. We have uh, our good brother, John Speed, joining us via Skype, with whom we'll connect with in a minute. But on the topic of the whole pro-life issue, we have a couple of encouraging things that have come into the ministry as of late. This is an email that we received from Stephanie. And uh, this is after she watched 180. She said, I've always said I'm pro-life, but it's a woman's choice if she wanted an abortion. She's the one that should have to live with her decision. After the analogy of Hitler and choice, I've changed my mind. I'm now pro-life all the way. Isn't that good to hear stuff like, God it bless is. you, Stephanie, yeah. if you're watching. Yeah, <laughs> what an encouragement that is. And, uh, you know, uh, our goal is not just someone switching from being pro-death to being pro-life, but it's someone coming to repentance and faith. So if you happen to be watching Stephanie and you don't know Christ yet, uh, we'd love to get in touch with you and uh, talk to you about the gospel. We have another exciting and interesting item as well. Uh, this is something that The Blaze put out. It's about a, a, a young mother who came across someone who not only talked to her about the pro-life issue, but also shared the gospel with her. And uh, that's our uh, beloved sister, Sherry Pierce, who's been out battling uh, for lost souls. She is a trooper. Babies. She is. She's been, she's been to academies, hasn't she? Number oh, yeah. Of times? She's been involved and helped to, to you know, lead some of our women in well, those. And, and giving out uh, uh, origin of species and 180s. And yeah. She's a trooper. Extremely encouraging. So, That's we true. want you to hear the story for yourself. So, if we have the video cued, let's roll it. Yes, I am. I'm, and I want to give God all the glory because truly, we're not heroes out there. He's the hero, and it's amazing what he did that day and that we see him continue to do. What, what happened? Well, <clears throat> Rebecca, amongst other women, were going in that day, and we call out. We are part of a ministry called Refuge in the Desert Ministry. We're born-again Christians who love the Lord and know that he's commanded us to speak for those that cannot speak up for themselves. And that's the babies in the womb. Can you? And so we caught, we caught, excuse me, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Fin go ahead and finish. And then you guys have to pick up the baby. We have to see these beautiful children. Okay, we will. And so we, we, we call out and we, we let them know, hey, we have free help for you today. We have we can, free ultrasounds, free pregnancy tests, free cash assistance, free places to live, free doula services, free counseling. Please let us help you. Children are a blessing from the Lord. They're a heritage from the Lord. They're fearfully and wonderfully made by God, created by God in his image by God and for God you have no right to kill this child so, so Rebecca what was it that that connected with you what what in the end made you say okay 
I, it was just that when she, she, she told me, I mean, basically, she just said that you, you don't have to do this. She was asking me, you know, why I felt I had to, and she said, you know, no, you, you don't, you know, have to do this. And, like, she said she provided me with all of these different resources that I didn't even realize existed. And um, mm -hmm. the way that she talked about them, the way that she talked about, you know, I didn't know I was having twins at the time, so the way she talked about it being my baby, also, it made me think of it a lot differently. Um, can you um, introduce <coughs> us? Because you didn't have one baby. You right. had two. Right. <coughs> Come on, Olivia Grace. Come you were thinking Grace. about adoption, <laughs> were you not, uh, Rebecca? Yes, initially. And she said that, and she actually told me. The first person that her, Sherry, told me. She said, Rebecca, I would adopt your baby right now if you wanted me to. Um, and it just made me realize that, is that, that that definitely is a very real option. There are people out there who would love to have mm. children who can't have children. I will tell and you that, that um, uh, <coughs> I will tell you that um, my wife and I adopted a child um, uh, from a very young mother um, who didn't know what to do. And we had been praying for a miracle. We couldn't have um, a child. And, um, and that, that mom um, performed a miracle and delivered our child to us. And uh, we are forever grateful. And I don't understand why more people don't understand. There are so many people that will take babies. There are so many people that will take them. There's so many who want them, and that's something we tell them, is you're in a desperate situation, you feel desperate, but there's people that are desperate to have a child, and you're an answer to their prayer. They, but Glenn, I want to make sure that they know that we not only offer them help, but we offer them hope through the gospel of Jesus Christ, because he's the one that transforms hearts and minds. You know, this, the help on this earth is just temporary, but repentance you know and faith you, in Jesus you, Christ is eternal. You know who you remind Oh, you go, Sherry! Yes! That just, oh, I mean, so. seriously, not only, again, is she talking about the, the importance of saving babies from murder, but she's talking about, hey, we bring the gospel, Yes, you know? And uh, what an encouragement that is, taking truth wherever. Now, uh, most of you who watch us know that uh, we do not share Glenn Beck's theological persuasion by any means. Uh, he's a member of the uh, LDS Mormon Church. Right. Uh, it's a different gospel. but. Praise God that he's willing to bring on, on someone like Sherry and to, and to share a story like that. You know, it just speaks to the, uh, the wickedness of human hearts. How can anyone not look at that and say abortion is wrong, period? Right. They're, they're, they're babies that are here because you didn't take your life. It's just, I am forever um, astounded at the wickedness of human hearts. So, there's an atheist in uh, Huntington Beach we've been talking to, and some friends are saying they talked to him, and he says he thinks they should bring in uh, a, a, um, mandatory abortions for the population's sake in years to come. Oh. He's adamant. Yeah. It's crazy. So well, I said we'll start with him. <laughs> right. Will he volunteer? <laughs> Make more room on the earth. I mean, Eddie, how moving is that to see our sister on there on, uh, you know, on a program that's aired all around the world with millions of viewers talking about the gospel and talking about saving babies from murder? You know, when you look at the abortion issue, it's just so overwhelming. And, you know, you get into uh, politics and when it comes time to, time to vote, you know, we, we vote for laws to try, try to change them, but you know, you can get the sense of this is something that there's nothing you can do about. And you see a segment like that, and there's two babies who are now given the, ch the opportunity to live because someone did something that was pretty simple, just going to talk to someone in, in front of a, you know, a, an abortion clinic. Right. And same with the letter we read earlier, and even when we were working on 180, we had no idea that the result of that video you can watch for free at 180movie.com. We had no idea the results of it were going to be babies were going to actually be allowed to live. And we have some portraits around the office here just showing babies that have been saved right. from a simple thing as, as showing someone a movie. You know, and that's, that's the awesome thing. That's the power of the, the video we're going to look at in a minute is Amen. there's simple things that everyone can do about this, even if it's just sharing a video with someone else. Right, right. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, uh, as Eddie said, we are extremely excited about the new film that's just recently been released that you've seen us promote through Living Waters, and that is 
the movie Babies Are Murdered here, and we're going to be talking to one of the co-producers, our brother John Speed, about that. Uh, it's something that we've been promoting heavily and with enthusiasm and excitement, and I want to read to you the statement that we've put out. Some of our dearest co laborers in the gospel and allies in the fight for life have produced a very powerful movie called Babies Are Murdered Here. While there are some segments of the movie that don't reflect Living Water's preferred tone and approach in handling the sensitive subject matter that it addresses, and while there are also specific portions that we would have preferred to be excluded from the production, we nonetheless believe very strongly in the film's intended purpose and would like to encourage every Christian to watch it. Babies Are Murdered Here is raw, it's gripping, it's riveting, and most importantly, it contains a sobering message that needs to be heeded by the people of God all across the world. We believe that it bears the potential to dramatically transform the current landscape and the fight for life through the proclamation of the gospel. We hope that you will join us in spreading this timely film far and wide. And we believe that with all of our hearts. And so now we want you to watch this trailer, and then we'll bring on our brother John to talk about the movie. Let's roll it. I had one church. Uh, friends went to their church. We'd like to start going to the mill, and the, and the pastor said, well, we're really excited about that, but we have one question. Is it safe? And they came back and said, what do we tell them? I said, tell them no. Whether we want to or not, whether we like it or not, I hate coming here, but we have got to leave. God has called us for this time. Tell them it's not safe. Tell them they may get spit at. Tell them they may get hit. One more move before we got on my lap. One more. Huh. That's it, mother You still got hit, please. Tell them they may get arrested even though they didn't break any laws. And tell them if they don't go, Babies will die and souls will end up in hell. We need to stop being middle-class American sissies. A woman who chooses to have an abortion, would you consider her to be a murderer? That's a very harsh, you know, perspective mm -hmm. to take from, from my perspective. Babies, that's what I do. I kill babies. We need to be willing to take risks. We need to be willing to look like not respectable members of society. Boy, very powerful images there. Uh, um, Heartrending to think uh, some woman's going across saying, "I kill babies." Boasting and gloating about just it. absolutely, absolutely wicked. And, and and how it thrilled my heart to see all those people standing with those signs. How can not, that not be a testimony right. of people going past? Um, Amen. Yeah, and and you know that's one of the powerful things that the film does is it shatters these false notions that uh, women who are having abortions are victims or they don't understand what they're doing and it's extremely powerful. So as I said, our brother John Speed is with us. John has been a dear friend of our ministry for many, many years. Uh, he's helped lead in our ambassadors' academies uh, that we've had for years, and he was a partner with us when the 180 movie was being distributed across the country. He's out in Syracuse. He's a co-producer of the film with our other dear brother, Marcus Pittman, and uh, he's also the pastor of Christ as King Baptist Church. John, what a blessing it is to have you with us all the way from Syracuse. How are you, our brother? <laughs> Doing well. Thank you for having me on. That's an honor. For those who live in New Zealand, Syracuse is in New York. That's a city <laughs> right. on the east coast. <laughs> right. And you all heard uh, our brother Ken Ham, who was with us recently on the program, and we had the Australian accent going there. John is from the U.S., but you'll hear a little New York accent going on here or there. But, uh, John, what a, what a powerful, powerful film. And uh, we praise God that you've made it. And as I said, we've been so excited to, to be a part of it. How, how have things been going? How has the storm been for you since the movie's been released? And how many views does it have now on YouTube? We have about 31,000 views as of today. It's been out for about a week. And um, we've been really encouraged by all the people who've been sharing the movie and letting their friends know about it. It's been great. So the acronym is BAM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't by design, but yeah. uh, right. uh, worked out nice that so way how did it, with how a hashtag to, to share that. Yeah, right. How did it come about, John? Well, it was pretty much a mistake. Uh, uh, we brought Marcus Pittman in from Crown Rights Media to do a, a short film on our church, and I accidentally booked his ticket to go back very early Sunday morning, and so we thought, well, what are we going to do now? And... Uh, I knew of an abortion clinic nearby that advertises on its website that they don't have any protesters who come out so that the women can feel safe when they come have their abortions. Right. So we decided to go over there and film and see what happened. And the night before, Robert Gray and my wife made these babies are murdered here signs for the, for the clinic. And we got out there and started filming and we're just 
amazed at the reaction, not only of the women who are coming to the clinic, but passersby, and even the abortionists themselves. We realized, well, we think we might have a documentary here. Wow. So we put a two-minute trailer out on the internet, and with that two-minute trailer, people started getting excited about the idea, and really the documentary was us going across the country filming what people were doing uh, based off of the two-minute trailer. So it was kind of maybe a backwards way to do it, but um, the Lord has been pleased to do an amazing work here. So has it been a spiritual battle? Absolutely, in ways that I never would have dreamed, even now as we release this and uh, deal with various issues that, that go along with filmmaking, I guess it's it's uh, definitely very much a spiritual war. Right. Yeah, John, you know, I've been amazed to, to see some of the venom that you guys have been getting. And again, it's kind of part and parcel with speaking truth. Uh, you know, there are a lot of pro-life organizations, but my sense from the film was that, you know what, we're not going to take the sugar coating anymore. And because we love people, because we love God, His kingdom, and the gospel, we're going to just put this out and say it the way that it is. Uh, would that be a fair assessment of, of your hearts behind making the film? Definitely. You know, we love the Lord, and we love His truth, and we believe that because His truth has not been in the forefront of this battle, that's part of the reason why we've had 41 years of this. Right. And we, we need to get the truth being proclaimed back out in front of the abortion clinics. Yeah. Well, what would you say is the all-encompassing goal uh, for the movie? What do you guys hope to see it accomplish? Well, the goal of the movie is to mobilize the local church to go out with the gospel. We just want them to see the abortion clinic as a mission field that they can take their folks to and with very simple methods, a simple sign and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can save the lives of babies and see people's souls stay for eternity. Amen. Right. Eddie, I know you've got some questions for John. Yeah, John, you know what, I, I saw the video right when it came out. It's, it's awesome. Just want to congratulate you guys on on that. One of the best things about it is, is that it's free. Anyone can go on the internet on to your uh, webpage, babiesaremurderedhere.com, and watch it for free. Um, and that's, that's part of the power. Um, one of the things the movie really touches on is the fact that a lot of Christians, a lot of people within the different ministries um, that are you know, pro-life, they don't like to use the term murder. They, they use other, there's other ways they go about talking to the women in front of the abortion clinics, trying to reason with, reason with them and stuff like that. But how is it that, why do you think people don't like to use the word murder when they're talking about this subject? Well, it comes down to the idea in the pro-life movement that, that the woman is as much a victim of the abortion as the baby is. Uh, R.C. Sproul Jr. in the movie points, points this out. Uh, it, the women know when they come, and you see examples of this in the movie, that what they're doing is they're murdering their children. They, they know it when they get there. And they act not as victims, but they act as people would you would expect to act when they go to murder someone. If you try to stop them, they swear at you, they spit at you, they threaten you, if not outright assault you. And so this is not a, a victim. Now, the pro-life movement wants us to believe that uh, the, the woman has bought into the pro-choice propaganda and what they essentially do is give her a scapegoat so that they can blame the pro-choice movement on what they have done. And so it gives them a reason to excuse their sin of murder, and it gives them a reason even to excuse their sin of fornication in many cases that has brought them to the clinic in order to do this thing. Right. And so if you make her a victim, it's easier to count her as a convert to the pro-life movement. She doesn't have to face her sin. And so what we're saying is bring the gospel to bear on the situation, call it what it is, and uh, bring and let them know there's hope in Jesus Christ that they'll repent and believe the gospel. Uh, otherwise, what we're doing is creating false converts through the pro-life ministry right. and giving women a false assurance. You know, Ray, that really goes right along with what you've always taught in evangelism, that you can't really tell people the good news unless they face their own sin. You know, so, so Ray, what are your thoughts on... on 
Yeah, I, I was just uh, thinking about what John was saying. To say these women are victims is like saying the Nazis that killed the Jews in the concentration camps were victims as they shot the mothers and fathers mm -hmm. and children through the head and through the chest. Those poor guys pulling the triggers were just victims. It's not true. They were killing people and they've got a conscience. They know that it's wrong and so those that uh, take the life of their children in the womb are, uh, are doing it with knowledge that it's wrong. John, um, have you seen any fruit from this as yet? Yeah, we've already gotten private messages from women who've had abortions. One lady who said she wished that it was a DVD so she could throw it in the trash and burn it. Wow. Uh, she went from that position to being open to hearing the gospel. and We've been able to have a very good conversation with her. Uh, we've also had crisis pregnancy center directors contact us and say that they have been handling the issue of the gospel wrongly and they're going to change the way that they do business at the mm -hmm. crisis pregnancy centers. Mm -hmm. Praise the so Lord. we're really excited about that. So I think you're going to see a lot more fruit as time goes on. Yeah, absolutely. So, John, what's next for the film? Where, where does it go from here? Oh, we're translating the uh, film into Spanish and to Portuguese. There are some local churches in Mexico City and Brazil that are going to help with that. And uh, we're working on distribution in the United Kingdom and Australia with the DVDs. We have just uh, had a fundraiser to to make 10,000 copies, and a 1,000 of those are going to go to a pastor's conference in Arizona, and another several thousand are going to University of Georgia. Bobby McCreary will head up a distribution there, so right. we're wanting to get the DVDs out, but really the main thing is we want to see it go viral, so we need people to share the hashtag and the link to the video and just blast it out as, as much as they can. Right. You know, John, one of the things that I absolutely loved about the film was the clarion call to the church. To mobilize, you know, um, if if the body of Christ would rise up and recognize its mandate, we're so excited about men's and women's retreats, about women's tea, about men's sporting events, about all these social activities, and sometimes right down the street there are clinics where babies are being murdered, and so the call to the body of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ, to rise up and, and to begin to to commission their people to go out uh, is such an encouraging thing, and, and brother, we are completely behind that and, and are extremely excited about that. So I'll kick it to you, Eddie, for uh, one final question. Yeah, again, I think this is an amazing video that everyone needs to watch. And speaking of that, John, so where can someone go to watch, watch the, the uh, video? And also, I, I was looking on, on your website. I saw there's different things that people can get to promote it and things like that. Talk about that for just a moment. You can watch the video at www.babiesaremurderedhere.com, and that's free. You can also pay to download the video to your phone or whatever electronic app. Uh, also, we've got tracks there, gospel tracks, bumper stickers, signs for abortion clinic ministry. There's all kinds of uh, resources there so that you can get started going to the clinic. Amen. All right, thanks so much. I, I, again, it's an amazing video. I want everyone to go and and watch it as soon as you get done watching the rest of this show. But um, <laughs> anyway, I'm um, going to send it back over to you, Easy and Ray. Yeah, John, thank you so much, brother. Yeah. It's uh, just such an honor to, to see your steadfastness in the gospel uh, over the years. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this and believe firmly that, that this is a film that really has the potential to, to change the landscape yeah. uh, when it comes to the fight for life in connection with the gospel. And that's extremely important. So, John, thank you so much for joining us, brother. And uh, we hope to have uh, our brother Marcus on sometime so we can continue the dialogue with you guys. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me on. All right, God bless. Well, there you have it, friends. Again, that's babiesaremurderedhere.com. Babiesaremurderedhere.com. Check it out, get behind it, and pass it on to others. Ray, how are you today? I'm all right. Yeah. No, my name is written in heaven. I have joy unspeakable. I just need two, two, two on your screen, oh. which is wonderful. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God that uh, from glory to glory is changing me, and we've got the hope of everlasting life. And how can we never be filled with joy, Amen. even in tribulation? Amen. Way to put it. Now we're gonna kick a question over to Eduardo Romano, our resident scholar, <laughs> and this is an email from Eric. Why does God? If he is so powerful, need to reserve a third of these Ten Commandments for telling you to like him a lot. What say ye, Eddie? Boy, probably because he knew prideful and rebellious people would not. He probably knew uh -huh. that there were people out there who 
We're going to follow after the example of Satan. And even though God is so good and has given them so much, he was going to turn his back on them and rebel. And so the commandments are just reminders, you know, rules that show us how it is we as humans can live our lives in the, in the best way possible and also how it is that we are to follow after, follow after and obey our Maker. And I think it's as simple as that. For someone to even ask a question like this just kind of shows a lot of pride. And they're basically saying, you know, why should I care about what God wants? And the answer is, is simply because He's God. Wow. You know? Amen. Wow, with much facial hair comes much wisdom, friends. <laughs> oh, Ray's got much more facial hair. Thank you. So what say yeah, you, Yeah, this, this question has made me weep. It's so ignorant, so arrogant, uh, so rebellious. Now, what would you think of a child if you gave him a little gift and you snatched it off you and just walked off? You'd think, the little rebellious brat. I was like that for 22 years with my meals. God would give me meals, and that's where the food comes from, and I'd just eat them without giving God thanks. Wow. which I find horrific that we could just snatch from the hand of God and not be right. thankful. And so what does God require of us as human beings? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's what God requires of us. And we don't love Him. We hate Him with that cause and use His name as a cuss word. And that mm. shows how far we've fallen short of His uh, requirements. Amen. And if we had any sense, we'd recognize that God's glory is our greatest good. Yeah. God fashioned and formed and created us and so we're not independent of him as his creation and the most dangerous thing is to be disconnected from the God who gave us life and breath the healthiest thing the greatest thing for human beings is to worship God uh, right I mean to, to glorify God and enjoy him forever it so, comes as naturally as birds singing in the morning morning once you're once you're born again you just want to raise your arms and right. praise him because he, he gave us life and food and Food and, <laughs> and food. And food. <laughs> right. Now, everything we have comes yeah. from the hand of God and His Amen. kindness. Amen. Well, friends, thank you again for joining us today. As you saw, this was an incredibly important program. Remember to check out babiesaremurderedhere.com and check us out on tzzlive.com. Connect with us on Facebook and through Twitter. And be sure to get out of your comfort zone and preach the gospel for the glory of God. For questions about the comfort zone with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email us at email at tczlive.com. That's email at tczlive.com. The Comfort Zone is an outreach of living waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel. Imagine if you could change society's stance on abortion. How do you feel about the issue of abortion? I think in some situations it can be necessary. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yeah. Would you ever vote for someone who was for the killing of children in the womb? No. I believe in someone's right to choose. So you're going to change your stance on it? Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely making me think, yeah. I feel like it's more of the, a choice. Yeah, when you put it that way, it does change your mind. Would you vote for someone who is pro-abortion? Yeah. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, I have. <laughs> I believe that people have the right to choose. Okay. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, that's, I've just changed my mind about abortion. So you're going to vote differently in future? Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. Sometimes it's necessary if you're in the situation where you can't support a child. So you're saying that you're changing your mind about yes. abortion right now? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a woman's right to choose and every situation is a different situation. So you're going to vote differently and think differently about this? Yeah, I think I would. I think I definitely would. I'm for abortion. It's never okay to kill a baby in the womb. Okay, so you're going to change your mind about abortion? Yes, I am. Are you going to vote differently in future? Yes, vote against abortion. What was it that changed their minds in a matter of seconds? Find out. Go to 180movie.com for details.